Hi everyone, uh, this is my very nice Yaesu FRG 7700, uh, originally manufactured I think in the late 70s, um, so that makes it sort of nearly 40 years old, um, and it has been working perfectly, I bought it second hand on eBay, um, maybe not a year ago, getting on for a year ago, um, I bought it because I actually wanted the FRA 7700 preamp. Uh, and I wanted to use that with my FRG 8800, but um, I couldn't find one on its own. But I did find one with this receiver, so I bought this receiver as well, which is a little bit silly really perhaps, but I'm sort of glad I did because it is a very nice vintage receiver with wonderful audio. Um, it recently developed a fault, the band selector is this rotary switch, um, and as you turn the switch to select the band, um, often uh, it wouldn't uh, actually change the frequency, it would jump bands, um, you know, it got gradually worse. So um, in the end, not that the receiver became unus unusable, but it was just really annoying. So um, my friend, Graham, uh, who has a YouTube channel, he's Radio Cruncher, and he won't like me to say this, but he's to me at least, a genius when it comes to restoring uh, and repairing radios. Um, I mentioned it to him and he said, you know, he would welcome the opportunity to uh, have a look at it and see if he could fix it, um, which ultimately he did. Um, it was something to do with the memory board or some ICs on the memory board that were causing a problem because when the memory board was isolated, the uh, band selector worked perfectly. Now, I don't use the memories on this, um, so we, he isolated the problem um, and uh, that basically resolved um, the problem with the band selector switch completely. Uh, but while he had it, uh, he suggested a few upgrades and just some kind of remedial work um, to hopefully keep this radio going for another 40 years. You know, this is the sort of radio really that you kind of you don't get rid of really. Um, I couldn't imagine selling this or the FRG H800. Uh, and he did quite a lot of work to this radio to kind of future proof it. Um, he removed the PLL board and cleaned it. He stripped the back of the band switch control anyway and cleaned it. He took the power, sub power supply board off, replaced the large filter capacitor for a higher spec and a higher temperature rating, I think 105 degrees. Um, I think at the time he thought that the excessive DC ripple um, could be throwing the PLL circuit out. Um, he replaced the bridge rectifier uh, because apparently that's a known problem with these radios, which I'm not aware of. Um, he replaced all the electrolytic capacitors on the power supply board um, for uh, new ones that rated also rated 105 degrees. Um, the old ones were made by a company called Elner. I'm reading his message to me, um, a rate of 85 degrees. Um, he reseated the power transistor in the power board with um, fresh heat sink compound. Um, he also replaced the uh, 4.7 volt Zener diode, um, which resolved a uh, low output on the 11 volt line. He cleaned and lubricated the, all the pots, volume and tone pots. They were a bit scratchy. I managed to fix one, but um, they're all perfect now. Um, he, also, he actually at some point took the band switch out for a second time and completely dismantled it, cleaned all the contacts with fiberglass pen and uh, isopropyl alcohol. Um, he did a full realignment of the PLL, set, reset all the reference frequencies, VCOs, etc. Um, he also replaced the uh, electrolytic capacitors on all four VCOs um, and also a ceramic capacitor that apparently was just out of spec. Um, he replaced the switching diodes um, from the band switch. There were 16 of them. He replaced them with 1N4148s. Uh, interesting actually because I just bought some diodes today to build um, a little box to kind of protect and attenuate um, the signal from my very long uh, antenna that I've made for, my, for the Sony. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I think that's about everything he did. Um, he did a lot of work on it and he's char his charges are very reasonable and I now have this radio back uh, 
and it is working perfectly. This is Saudi. Um, yeah, it's working absolutely perfectly, uh, and I'm really pleased um, with all the work that he's done because it means now that, in all likelihood, this radio can carry on for perhaps another few decades. I mean, of course, something else could go wrong, but you know, I feel uh, I feel good that you know it's at the moment it's in tip-top shape, uh, and I don't use it very often uh, because, interestingly, it um, although it's a good performer, you know, it doesn't perform as well as some of you know my more modern portables um but uh, i have an emotional attachment to it so uh you know i won't be i certainly won't be getting rid of it and um probably at some point i need to think about doing something similar with the radio underneath it the frg uh 8800 but my thanks to graham radio cruncher check out his youtube channel it's immense it's the work the work that he does in restoring uh, old radios um, Hackers, Roberts, 1970s and before, um, you know, he's a very clever guy and, um, you know, I couldn't have done, repaired this radio uh, in a million years. Um, he's a really nice chap and, um, yeah, you should definitely check out his channel. Um, but in the meantime, yeah, I, as I said, I'm very happy um, because my FRG 7700 is in perfect working order um, and probably to celebrate I might try and um, record a couple of reception videos on it at some point in the very near future but anyway I just thought I'd share that with you if you've got a radio that with the problem you know um, depending on his workload you know he is a go-to guy uh, for that for sure okay well thanks for watching